You're in the middle of an incredibly important two week period when it comes to the fight against climate change with big climate strikes happening both this Friday and next Friday, as well as a number of other events that you're gonna wanna pay attention to if you're interested in doing something about the climate crisis. And joining us now on the show is someone who is gonna be doing one of those events. If you're on the East Coast, you might wanna take a look at. This is Chuck Nice, comedian and climate activist. Chuck, welcome hey. back to the show. Hey John, how are you, man? How you been? I've been good. Climate hasn't, but I'm I'm doing okay. How are you? This is true. Um, yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the exact same uh, uh, kind of uh, position as you. Yeah. I, I think we all are. Without a, without whether we know it or not, we're all in the same position. Uh, you know, next week is NYC or Climate Week NYC, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with the um, the climate group, the people behind Climate Week NYC, and um, they are supporting us. Um, through um, giving us the opportunity to do a proof of concept show, which is a part of a campaign that I founded that I talked to you about a little mm -hmm. while ago called Shh, It's Real. And the shush part is for those who are denying or obfuscating this issue because we've gotten to a place now where we don't really have as many deniers as one might think. <laughs> um, but what we do have are a lot of people who are negative about the issue, people who are uh, kind of confusing the issue. Um, and so we're telling them to shh, <laughs> and for everybody else, it's real. And if you collapse it, you know, I can't curse because, you know, <laughs> but I mean, if you collapse it, you, you understand what it is. I get it, yeah, it, took, it took me a bit, but I do yeah. get it now. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, you know, when you talk about realness hitting the fan, that's kind of where we are. Um, so, what we're doing, the campaign itself, is an attempt to take entertainment and use it as the messaging tool for climate. Of course, I'm a stand up comic, so I've been in entertainment now for 20 years. Uh, I also came to the climate issue uh, through my 10 years of work with uh, Star Talk Radio, which is the show I do with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm actually in his there. He, I mean, I'm in his office <laughs> right now. I <laughs> <laughs> see it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's him. That's but his anyway, uh, that's his bobble. But uh, you know what happened was I was spending all this time with these scientists and. I was doing research for the shows we were putting on and finding out all of this incredible information. And I looked around, and I was like, okay, why is no one actually saying this stuff? Why is the media saying this stuff? You, my friend, have been on this issue for quite some time and Thank doing you. a great job of telling people about it and alerting people and sounding the alarm bells. But what I realized is that we need a point of connection. And entertainment is always a point of connection. Uh, I tell people that everything you learned as a child, you learned through song. And there's a reason for that. Your brain is designed to receive information differently when you are entertained. It's part of the <clears throat> dopam dopaminogic system, which just means that the drugs in your brain uh, actually give you a little hit. When, mm -hmm. uh, when, when you learn something and you're entertained at the same time. So that's, it becomes a pleasurable thing and you want to know more. Using that as a base, I was like, well, why are we not using entertainment to communicate climate? And uh, that's what this whole campaign yeah. is about. So we use sketch comedy, stand-up comedy, short film, musical performances. We bring them all together. And all of the content is actually about climate. And then we give you interstitial messaging that is hopeful and positive about what you can do about this issue. Because one of the things that burns me up is when I hear people say, well, changing habits isn't going to be enough. I mean, you know, turning off lights and uh, eating a less one less burger a week, that's not going to do it. And I tell those people, please, you know, shut up because <laughs> just shut up. You're not helping things because the real deal is this. It does make a difference if we all lower our carbon footprint individually, we all lower our carbon footprint as a country. Yeah. And and that's all there is to that. I mean, it's it's the different it's like coral. You know, one one little coral this this little like microscopic organism, you know, by itself, yeah, it's doing nothing. But when you put them all together, you get the Great Barrier Reef, which, by the way, is um, is in danger because of climate crisis. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's this is what I'm trying to get to people to see is that <clears throat> it's not about you just doing one thing. It's about being engaged. 
once you're engaged, you're more likely to do more than one thing. You're more likely to become passionate about this because it is your survival that we're talking about. And you're very likely to do to change the way you vote. You're very likely to you know, start making mitigation efforts of your own, to start demanding things like, hey, don't send me plastic forks and knives unless I ask for it. Yeah. You know, like re- when there was a drought, I for- I'll never forget, uh, I forgot where I was. And they were like, oh, would you, we have to ask if you would like water. We used to just put it on the table. But as a conservation met- uh, method, um, um, as a conversation, comp- 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 what happened? Conservation, as yeah, a yeah. Comp- I get where you're going. You know what I'm saying. (laughs) They would say, would you like water? Well, that's just a tiny little change, but it makes a huge difference. We know these things work. If you look at day zero, okay, in Johannesburg, these, this, they were running out of water. And through public change of habits, they actually staved off a crisis. That's what we can do with respect to the globe. Don't let anybody take your individual power. You do have the ability to make a change, and that's what we're doing. So, so oh, sorry. Let me very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Wednesday, the 25th of September in New York City at New York Comedy Club, we'll be putting on a proof of concept show uh, with stand-up comedy sketch, uh, short film, and musical performances to bring uh, this issue to light in such a way where people understand that uh, entertainment is a point of connection. The, awesome. Chuck, it's 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 Jr. Um, first of all, I love the approach with um, telling people that aren't really going to listen. You can already tell aren't going to be a part of the solution. Just move on and move away from them. Shut up and move on. Um, so, what have you seen as far as the reception from people that have been listening? Do they like the concept? Has it been something that activates people that you've seen right in front of you? Absolutely. And this is what I'm so encouraged about is that number one. So you know we're. At this point, as an organization, we're just, you know, we're crawling. Um, No one has ever tried this before to actually make the entire campaign about entertainment um, and education. Uh, So, you know, we're in a space that normally when you're the first person in a space, you don't succeed. (laughs) 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 But but I'm willing to take that chance. (laughs) Um, But everyone that we've gone in front of has been like, brilliant idea. We love it. And everyone that um, we engage with. Uh, especially young people. Our audience is 16 to 25 because primarily what we want to tell people is vote, okay? 21% of uh, young people between the ages of 18 and 30 used to vote, and uh, uh, and now it's up to 31%, and I think we can get it to 50%. And if we get it to 50%, we, we rule the world, okay? That's all there is to it. You want to talk about progressives? All the people in that age group, for the most part, are progressive, but they don't go to the polls. And that's because they're cynical as well. I hate to say that, but they are. And what I'm saying is we can drop cynicism. Cynicism is the tool of people who want to maintain the status quo. Yep. Don't think, don't ever think that cynicism is about people saying, oh, it don't make a difference, nothing I do. Oh, man, come on. No. Cynicism is about people who say, I need this to stay exactly how it is. So, yeah, guess what? No, nothing makes a difference. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, they're all crooks. Nothing matters. You know why? Because I get to keep polluting. I get to keep putting and dumping plastics into the ocean. I get to keep digging crap out of the ground and burning it. That's never going to change unless we exercise the political will to make it change. And we can't do that with doom and gloom. And that's why entertainment is the perfect touch point. And I use this. I know I know we're short on time, but I use this as an example for everybody to understand. This is how powerful entertainment is in terms of changing the way you think. Without entertainment, I am positive. Now I can't say this empirically because I don't have a time machine, but I am positive that we would never have had our first black president, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all, all of this, and, okay, but on the real, on the real, what I'm saying is, if it weren't for Morgan Freeman saving the world, okay, if it weren't for Dennis, Dennis Hastert, not Hastert, Dennis Hastert, the guy who played in 24, the mm-hmm. president, I think that softened the animus of the concept of a black 
president. And so it didn't become such a ridiculous yeah. premise because there was a black president in your home. On yeah. t- you know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying about entertainment. That's the power that it has. Yeah. Uh, look, I love what you're doing. Um, uh, I hope the event is uh, packed, uh, you know, beyond the fire code. And uh, and I hope we keep talking, Chuck. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, good luck. Um, let's talk soon and uh, and see how the the, the trial run yeah. went. Absolutely, man. And uh, appreciate all that you do, and uh, and Same appreciate you. your support, man. Uh, seriously, um, I'm I'm so grateful to you. Seriously. Thank you, man. Uh, you got Chuck, have a good day. Take care. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.